Hello everybody and welcome back to Hyper Metroid in the final video of the hack. So, as I was saying in the last video, terrain is very standard fare. It's defeat Metroid's advance. Um, the differences are Rinka's drop pickups. There is a second type of Metroid which has more health. Um, Mother Brain is seeping on the tiles. You'll see that coming up in a few rooms here. It's, and your beam destroys the Zebatites. At least this combination of beam. I don't know if your beam does otherwise. It's possible they don't. So yeah, it's also got the sideways Zebatites. Those have been around for quite a while. I think this is actually the first tech that's used them though. So yeah, um, yeah, Mother Brain is seeping here. You can kind of see brain innards all over the uh, tiles here. Again, nice work with the custom tiles. Yeah, the custom tiles we have made are really good. But otherwise, this terrain is nothing special or whatever. There is a room up which I found to be absolutely ridiculous that some people liked for some reason. I guess you know some people didn't actually find out their beams could destroy the Zebatites, which I don't know how you go about doing that. And this is the other Metroid, the red Metroid. As you can tell has quite a bit more health. So yeah, but I guess some people didn't actually find out that their beam could destroy the Zebatites. So the one room coming up, it's just basically making you wait on Rinkas, is what it's doing. That is literally the room. You wait on Rinkas, or you wait on a gate while Rinkas fly at you. These completely hapless little enemies that can't harm you whatsoever when you're in screw attack or whatever. Um, I guess, you know, if you were using ammo on the Zebatites here, you know, you'd be running out or whatever, running lower. And then the Rinka room, I guess you could use that sort of as a refill. I don't know. I just think that's a bit silly. Like, it's literally nothing but making you sit and wait. I believe it's this room here. Yeah. This room. Sit and wait while these impotent Rinkas fly at you. This... I mean, and look at that gate just go so slowly. Like, really? <laughs> you made me wait for that. I... Yeah. I'm not a fan of that room. I don't get why people like it. So, um, otherwise, like I said, there's really not much to talk about with terrain. Um, the custom tiles are nice. That is something, you know, a lot of the tiles Real Red has drawn, you know, are really good tiles. They look great. His tile work in general, like in Hacks, isn't anything that's, like, super amazing. Like, the impressive stuff about, visually about the hack is, hey, there's custom tiles. It's not like, um, let's say with Demantra where he does, well, no one's quite like Demantra, where, you know, he takes tiles and does some really crazy stuff with them. Like, he can make the vanilla tile set look a lot more alien than the tiles Real Red has in here, so... So he's not, I mean, he's very good with just building rooms and stuff. That's in a very important part. That's, in fact, the most important part of using tiles is making a good functional room or rooms out of them. But actually just placing tiles, because, again, you know, pretty sure I've said this before, and if not, well, you'll get it here. 
Um, you know, graphics are nice, but they're not anything that's going to sell me, you know, to play something or buy something or whatever. Also, yes, there's a Metroid and I did not skip it. But yeah, graphics are just graphics. I mean, if it looks nice, great, but otherwise it's not a deal breaker. It's just, it just doesn't look as good. It's like, whatever. If it doesn't look as good, but plays way better, that's a better hack. So, graphics will only go so far, so. It could be a nice visual to look at, I guess. But overall, it's not super important. And here you can kind of see where it goes back around. So if you didn't collect Screw Attack before, you'd be able to get it. Um, the doors open up now, so that's all fun and all. Um, the health alarm is still going off, which is just wonderful. You know, the health alarm in Super Metroid is annoying. It's not nearly as annoying as the health alarm in some Zelda games. My goodness, some of those health alarms in those games are just awful. <laughs> I mean, awful. They will destroy your ears like nothing else. So, after taking a little bit to refill, because <laughs> you know, refilling's nice and all. Um, yeah. It was super important I refilled off those. Oh my goodness, that warp ball sound. That's still... That warp ball sound, I'm telling you, that is really... Like, how in the world... Do you choose that for your warp ball sound? But yeah, as for terrain, that's really pretty much it. It's just defeat Metroid's advance and people really like this terrain, but don't really care for other terrains that are just like this. I I have got nothing about that. I just don't understand. Like, why does... Like, again, it's probably because, you know, it looks different. You know, first of all, it's using Project Base, so the base itself already looks different. And then on top of that, he's got his custom tiles in, which look great. But they're just custom tiles. They don't actually do anything to train. Train is still the same old thing. You know, it's nothing special. It's sort of like the uh, Mother Brain fight. It's same fight. Of course, it's project based up a little bit. So yeah, she's a little bit faster, but otherwise, there is really nothing about this that is that amazing. So I, I don't know. Uh, people like it, great. I just... Not entirely sure why myself, though. But that's cool. Um, Mother Brain has some graphical edits. Mostly a uh, tube in a spot. And yeah, that ketchup bean totally just wasn't there. And neither was that one. <laughs> I don't know if that's something else with Project Base or not. I don't think so. Actually, it probably is now. I think about it. But yeah. Um, yes, uh, Mother Brain has a tube. You know, those little uh, bones sticking out of her back or whatever. 
And when she gets out of the wall and takes damage later, you'll see. And stupid me. <laughs> I didn't take health off fast enough. So I was like, ugh. Now I gotta sit through this. But yeah, you can kind of see the tube going through the bones or whatever all the way underneath her. It's weird. <laughs> Why is there a tube there? There shouldn't be a tube there. But there is. And yeah, you can really see it stand out while this is going on. So yeah, I'm not sure what in the world convinced him to draw that, but he did. And it's there forever for everyone to see. Hooray. So, yay, we've got... Now, you know, the, like the standard Mother Brain fight, well, I wish it was changed up more. Like, I would wish every boss was changed up a little more. You know, I can understand that not being changed. Just using what's in the game. Like, custom bosses and stuff is hard to do. So... And there's probably not that many people who can actually do that. So... Like, I understand that not being changed or whatever. Don't, don't necessarily like it, but... It's like, okay. So, the next part of this... And you can, because Project Base can just sit here and fire. You don't actually even have to jump. The next part, the escape. Like this, I can understand why people like this more. Like, I understand why they think the escape's great. I don't necessarily agree with that, but at least I can understand it. Because the escape timer this time is a lot longer. The escape itself takes you all over the place, literally. You are literally going to go everywhere. So we have a 10 minute timer to get out. And what the escape does, it takes you back through every other area. Got some more through terrain to go. And you got nice explosions and flashy glowy stuff. Flashy glowy stuff is always the best. You've got all this going on, you're trying to get out of terrain. Um, some of Grimes wonderful Rinkas here. <laughs> I love his Rinkas. Um, basically, you have 10 minutes because you're not quite getting to where you want to go as fast as you want. So I do have I guess there's really a couple issues, but only one that's really major. The one issue I have is this escape is evil in that it leads you straight to the animals. Like it sets you up to go to the animals. And that I just find unacceptable. I, I can't deal with that. The second thing, which is not quite as much of an issue with this heck as it is in redesign is the actual length of the escape or this and pantheon actually because pantheon also has a long escape and it sort of does something similar to this where it takes you through quite a bit of places this one's way better done than pantheon's but it's a much similar idea plus the timer's a little tighter in this one but with the length of timer you know, you know, there's this imminent threat happening. You're kind of sort of in a little bit of panic mode. You're at least trying to get out of here fast. You don't want to be caught in an explosion or anything. So that being the case, you know, you're in this sort of heightened state of awareness. You're trying to get out while all these explosions, the world is shaking. You know, things aren't going how exactly you'd want them to or whatever. You're being forced to take morph paths and whatever through places. You're not going anywhere particularly fast. So you know, you got all these stresses coming on. And there's only so long before 
that just becomes tiring. And yes, you have to hyper beam that gate. <laughs> some gates you can hyper beam, some you can't. I'm not too great on the consistency there, but whatever. Be nice if you had a differentiated graphics for those gates, which are hyper beamable and those that aren't. But yeah, there's only so long you can stay, you know, like this heightened state before, you know, it just becomes tiring, it's a drag. You just want it to be over with. So, I mean, that's the other issue I could see, you know, with this. I know a lot of people actually were... I was actually surprised at the amount of people who liked the end escape, even with the length. And I think it might just be something to do with how it's set up. And because we are going back through terrain or whatever. But it literally takes you through the other worlds as well. You're going back through Norfair, or I think, yeah, this part through Norfair. The part through Brinstar, which is absolutely evil because the animals. Then you got some through Criteria. So it's really, I think maybe the breakup sort of like that might help with the length of the escape. That might be part of it. So if you noticed anything about this elevator, you notice there was a path over here when we were going up and down. Now we obviously get to take that path. Boulders are falling at us. There's now puffs. See, so yeah, right now we're in Criteria, so it's like, oh my goodness, the ship is going to be coming up here. Hooray. And then the Real Red plays a little trick on you. It's like, nope. Although there was a pretty funny video where um, Desirect actually got past apart and got himself stuck until the planet exploded. Oh, I should say this is the reason why the hack is still pretty good because it has Shack Tool and he's absolutely required. This is the best part of the hack. You just gotta sit here while acid is rising and wait for Shack Tool. You have to break him out of the thing, first of all. Then you have to wait for him to destroy the squad. I love this. Anybody who doesn't like this is just, they're just a hater. You can't not like that. So yeah, I will always approve of Shack Tool being in the mix. And here's, as you can see, oh no, we're in Norfair. Explosions and things, no. And you're basically only going on the set path. There is no really deviations from it. And these bubbles are now yellow, which is kind of nasty. But whatever. So yeah, just went up there to check. Nope. So we gotta go through the blue door. And you know, escape stuff is actually kind of hard to set up because you need, like the amount of work it took to do this is pretty impressive. Because for every room you go through that has part of the escape, that room needs another room state for the escape. So you have to plan that all out, get that all set up so it'll work. And if any of these rooms happen to have other room states, you have to make sure that's all worked out as well. And then, yeah, suddenly that gate's now closed. And up here is where he plays a little trick on you. Because, you know, your ship is literally just over there, sort of. You're in Criteria. You're not that far from it, so it's not... You know, I got 4 minutes, 45 seconds, whatever. Not a big deal. But, you know, this lovely door you can open up through. Nope. Okay, closed on you. You gotta go through Brinstar now. And that's the gate Desirect got through. He did like a little speedball underneath it. And was stuck until the planet exploded, of course. So, yeah. But no, you've gotta go through Brinstar. And then here is the dirty trick. Because up through now, you know it's been like, oh hey, open doors, you should go through them. 
So without thinking, I just go in here. This is Bomb Tracer's room. And then suddenly this door is open. It's the stupid animals. I hate this hack for doing that so much. It's like my brain is thinking, oh, well, I look, checked these other doors. They were all locked. <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't actually need to go through the open door this time. So it doesn't take me to stupid dumb animals. So, yeah, you're welcome, people. I saved the animals for you. <laughs> it's against my will, but it happened. <laughs> yeah, that is my biggest complaint about this escape. <laughs> So yeah, you kind of got to go up and around through this, get caught by Samus Eaters. You can kind of see the planets falling apart a little bit, the bricks are falling, grapple blocks are falling. There's this big exploding siren thing going off. So yeah, although there's not much grapple blocks falling in that room and that pirate might have been there just to tell you hey there's something here I don't know or it's a reminder I guess so going through here it gets you back down the criteria through this way very close to where that elevator door would have put you off anyway it's like a room or two off and from here, you can get back to the ship after taking a way around again. So again, it's breaking things up, changing it slightly. So the problem with... Like, redesigns escape. Now, this is going off the original, not Axial. I don't know what Axial's escape is like. You know, the problem with that one is, it's first of all, it's three times as long as timer. And it kind of needs, well, it doesn't need that much, but you know, for a first time player, it kind of needs that. This one needs the 10 minutes for a first time player. But with redesign, you know, not only is the thing exploding, you know, you're just going so slow throughout the whole thing. It feels like a huge hassle to get anywhere during that escape when you got suitless underwater parts. You know, whereas the escape with this one and this hack, you know, you have gravity suit, you have all your stuff still. You're able to run and speed boost. You're able to go fast, so it feels like you're actually making a lot more progress than this. Compared to when you have 30 minutes. And, oh sorry, you're just... You're going to use it all just because you're going really, really slow. So that's where a big difference is between them. But that is the end right there. Got into the ship. Save the animals, it's unfortunate, I know, but... It happened. Every now and then it's been known to happen. But yeah, that is... Hyper Metroid. There's one other thing coming up. Which is basically like the end credits. He's changed those around. So it's again a nice little break from the original. And... There go the animals, you stupid things. You live to be in another hack. So, and after all that, I did it in a mere 5 hours 19 minutes game time. It was more than that, real time. It's probably closer to 8 hours. <laughs> real time. Maybe as long as I could, took a little bit in between each video. Chatting with people in IRC or whatever. So, yeah, you can see the credits. A little bit different. So you've got this nice little thing going on here. But yeah, Hyper Metroid. Actually, you know what? I think I'll hold my thoughts till the review. So I'm going to start trying to do reviews at the end of the hacks. So, like another video or whatever. I think that'd be a good idea. So I will try and wait. Just lots of stuff. That is something. I also like how the numbers are so much bigger than the letters in this. It's kind of a silly font. 
Although I guess that might be a thing in the Lelophons. Oh yes, and so Demander up there. There's a special bonus room in this hack. Sort of like an Easter egg room. I might make a video of that eventually. So, we'll see. And... Oh, we get the end to the story. It's part of the credits. So yeah, in this hack, it's supposed to be a lot darker storyline, sort of a retelling of Samus Past and whatnot, so. Hooray. And also Deer Force. And yeah, we get a thumbs up, great. And the percent for this hack, which will be coming up here shortly. Very colorful screw tech. Got 85%. So not terrible. But that is it for Hyper Metroid. I'll be doing a review video that will be coming up obviously after this. So I will say right now I do recommend playing it. Um, I'll get into some of the things in the review but your, I guess your mileage may vary just based on the type of hack it is. So again, I'll save that entire thing for later, but I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you for the next hack. Um, it'll probably either be the redesign axial edition or arrival. Um, or maybe both. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what the schedule looks like right now, but anyway, thank you again for watching and we will see you for the next one.